Uh, now, look, Talk Sport obviously is your home of boxing and from Saudi Arabia to the Copper Box in Stratford. We were back on the scene on Saturday night as we brought you live an exclusive commentary of Adam Azim's dominant knockout win over O'Hara Davis. Joining us for more on this now, former European Super Bantamweight champion Spencer Oliver. Morning, Spencer. Morning, Spencer. Yeah, Valley, how are you both doing? Excellent, yeah, mate. Yeah, really good, thanks, How was your mate? weekend? Tell us about your weekend, mate. Some good boxing, eh? Listen, the weekend was brilliant, and you're right what you say. We've been sort of all over the place. We've been Texas, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. We're back at the Copper Box. And, yeah, the Copper Box, it was a brilliant night of boxing. Young Adam Azim, 22 years of age, 11 and 0 with eight KOs, going in, going in against a horror Davis in a fight that was always going to be a tricky fight for him. You know, Adam Azim, just to give you a little bit of background, guys, Adam Azim and Ahara Davis were brought up in the same gym. Adam's obviously the young kid. Ahara Davis was the man of the gym at the time. So he had a psychological battle to overcome going in against his old friend, actually, in Ahara Davis. But what a job he'd done in there. He got the KO in the eighth round and what a performance. I mean, this kid is a super talent and it's not a matter of um, if he wins a world title, but when, in my eyes, anyway. Really? I mean, he said mm. afterwards... It was my best performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it his biggest test so far? Um, yeah, definitely. Ahara Davis is a decent fighter. He's been at world level. He lost to Barroso last time out. And you know what? It was one of those where you go like, it was a test to see at what sort of level he was at. Look, I was fortunate enough to catch <laughs> up with Adam, Adam Zim after the fight to see how he reflected on his performance. I tell you what, man, he's a top, top uh, world title contender. You know, I had to be really switched on. Shane goes to me, stick with your jab, stick with your jab, and then let the other shots come. And also for inside as well. I was working on my inside game and it's working now, so. Listen, you had a lot of psychological battles to overcome there because you grew up and O'Hara Davis was the man of the gym and whatnot. People don't understand that side of it, but you overcome them and showed your talent. Yeah, 100%. You know what? I looked up to O'Hara Davis so young, and you know what? He's, he's retiring now, so. You know, happy retirement to him, you know, such a legend, my brother for life as well. Listen, he's been a great fighter and you're a great fighter as well. I've got to ask you, mate, there's lots of talk. When's the fight going to happen with you, Dalton Smith, the two best in the country at super lightweight? Is that the fight you want next? Do you know what? I want it, I want it next year. But guess what? After watching the performance, he's going to be worried about me now. So, Spence. What's next on the cards for him then, do you think? Dalton Smith, I would think, eh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I saw Harlem Eubank as well as a, mm. it's been mentioned a lot in recent times. Yeah. yeah, Harlem Eubank was a fight that was going to be made. Unfortunately, we didn't get over the line. Um, Dalton Smith's the fight we all want to see, yeah. for sure. You know, Dalton Smith's at that stage of his career as well. I think he's 16 and 0 now. And, uh, you know, it's a fight that's been talked about, talked about but there's lots of. On the horizon for Adam Azim, he's the, sort of like the kid now that everyone wants. Everyone wants to everyone wants to fight because he's a, he's a he's a emerging star without a doubt. I mean, and on that performance against O'Hara Davis, it was great to see. By the way, guys, I saw on his social media that they were actually out having lunch together the following day. How nice, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do that? Like, you know, they, they grow up in the same gym together. They put all that aside. They get in the ring. They knock the life out of each other. Mind then you. they go to lunch afterwards. <laughs> Only boxing, you would get that sort of, you know, that, that sort of chemistry. Yeah, right, mate. That's, that's what it's all about. Absolutely yeah. terrific. <clears throat> Listen, t- tell us, Spencer, in the, in the late heavyweight, the, the British and Coma t- title was up, and uh, Lewis Edmondson had a points decision win over Dan Aziz. He did, yeah. So, look, it, it was the vacant British and Commonwealth light like, heavyweight title. It was all about Dan Aziz. He, he had a draw last time out after that loss to Joshua Boatsy. And he's really trying to keep his career alive at this stage. Louis Edmondson, it was all about opportunity. And he sort of took that opportunity, really. He went in there. He was only 9-0 and going in. I think Dan Aziz would probably start the favourite going into that one with the history of him. But bad performance, the performance before that. And... He didn't produce Dan Aziz. He was go. He was trying to push forward. Louis Edmondson was keeping on the outside. Styles didn't gel. It was not attractive to watch. But Edmondson got the win. He done what he had to do, and he got it over the line. It was one of those subjective scoring. Did you go for the pressure of Aziz, or this sort of like staying out of the way um, sort of style of Louis Edmondson? It was very very close. Um, I, I think I had Aziz just nicking it, but you know what? It was one of those you wouldn't you wouldn't care what way it went. And um, Louis Edmondson puts his puts himself on the map. He took that opportunity. That's what boxing is all about. We had Anthony Yard on there as well, actually. He yeah, Falcons and <laughs> Anthony Yard. You know, you look at that and you go, "There's big talk of him going into all these possible big fights." Joshua Boatsy was at ringside with me. He was doing a little bit of commentary with us as well. And um, 
He underperformed Anthony Yard. He found a very stubborn opponent in Ralph Falcons, who was 17 and 1 going into that, but not, not really proven at all. Everyone thought the Yard was going to go in there and blow him away, but that proved a tough night as well. So good night of boxing. Uh, Spencer, thanks very much, Mike. Thanks, Spencer. Have a good week, Paul. Yeah, cheers, guys. Um, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.